It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. Two grade schools playing our game today, Tulip Grove Elementary, Yorktown Elementary School. Play along and see if you can keep up with these wonderful students here today. Our format stays the same even though we're online and we have six categories of questions. Let's get started and meet that team from Tulip Grove and get this game started. Our Tulip Grove team is Mackenzie. Mackenzie, would you wave to everybody, please? She is a fifth grader. Joined by another fifth grader, Peyton. Peyton, who's been on our show before. Nice to have Peyton with us today. And for the first time, we have a fourth grader from this school, Naylan. Hey, Naylan, welcome. We like that room in the back. All of you have some nice backgrounds there. All right. It's now time to get started. Let's go to the green things category. I have three questions for you. One worth five points, one worth 15, one worth 25. Here is your five point question. Only by adding nitrogen to the nutrient-poor soil on the planet Mars will we humans ever be able to grow this plant, famous for its lucky four-leafed variety. Um, I think it's a clover. Say it again, please. I think it's a clover. Clover, that's right, four-leaf clover. That was a lucky question for you because you got your five points. That's the way to do it. Keep it going. Here's the 15 point question in green things. Because a long period of chilly weather, colder than 45 degrees Fahrenheit, is needed for spring buds to bear these fuzzy fruits associated with Georgia, the warming of the climate threatens the harvest in the future. Name those fuzzy fruits that need a period of chilly weather. I think it's a peaches. I think it's peaches. You got it. Those Georgia peaches. You're two for two. Let's keep it going. 25 points in green things. You know, water can be pulled up through the xylem tubes to the tops of trees, defying gravity, when this process taking place in the leaves up top creates a suction. What happens in those leaves at the top, what process that creates a suction to raw, draw that water up against the pool of gravity? What do you guys think? Um, it's like some sort of suction. So. Oh. That's a tough question. It's a tough question. It's evaporation. When that water evaporates, it creates a suction and actually pulls that water up. Because you probably wondered, how does water get to the top of trees? You know, why can't it go up there? Well, it's, it's part, uh, partly done by evaporation. Let's go to the zoo. Ready to go to the zoo? Let's go to the zoo. I love the zoo. Five points. I like this question, too. We've been talking about coronavirus varieties uh, another coronavirus mutant that exists along with the Delta and Omicron varieties is one whose name is a homonym for this sound made by a cow. What do you guys think? Um, what sound does a cow make? No. Moo, that's right. One of the Delta, one of the coronavirus uh, mutants is mu, M-U, not M-O-O. -O. It's one of the Greek letters of the alphabet. Okay, you got those five points. Let's go to 15 points. For an oyster to form a pearl, those beautiful pearls, it needs a little bit of shell or a grain of sand for minerals to collect on it. That object has what same name as the structures found at the center of an atom and the center of a cell. What do you guys think? Um, I think, I think 
Okay, guys, you should know this one. If you look at a diagram of an atom, the very center is one of these. If you look at a cell, the very center is one of these. It, that's the same name of what you find inside of an oyster, little piece of shell that that pearl can grow around. Come on, guys. Nucleus, a nucleus. Have you heard of a nucleus before? Nalen, have you ever heard of a nucleus? Yes. The, all right, so that's what we're looking for here. So I'm trying to give you clues in everything I say here. Just try to follow along. And I know it's hard. You, if you haven't played the game before, it's, it's kind of intimidating. Here's this guy with all these big words shouting at you. Just take your time and talk to each other. Because even though you're out in the same room, you know, uh, uh, Mackenzie can't do it all herself. And Peyton just, you know, you can look up because you can see where you are in the grid. You can, you know, give each other high fives in cyberspace out there. Here we go. I want to finish out the zoo with a multiple choice question. You know, the mail seems to get slower and slower and slower. At Christmas, maybe the cards you were expecting didn't get there until after Christmas. Well, some people say it's gotten so slow that they call it snail mail, named after that very slow moving creature. Is a snail, that famously slow moving creature, a gastropod, a cephalopod, or an isopod? It's one of those three. Talk among yourselves. Take that word apart. They all end in pod, but look at the prefix. Gastropod, cephalopod, or isopod. Which one of those is a snail? I think it's gastropod. I think it's, I think it's cephalopod. Yeah. So we have a gastro, we have a cephalo. Naylan, you haven't weighed in. You can pick one. Which of the three? Gastropod. All right, he goes with gastropod. All right, Mackenzie, it's all up to you. You choose. You're the captain. Um, I think it's uh, maybe like a, a, the, like a cephalopod. Or... Uh, a cephal cephalo means head. Uh, that's what you call like an octopus or a squid. A gastropod has its stomach as a foot. Correct answer was gastropod. So Peyton and Naylan, you had offer the correct answer, but uh, you'll get them next time. You'll get them next time. Let's go to the body systems for five points. Three more questions before you take your first break. You know, sometimes if you're listening to a favorite piece of music or a, or a movie, it reminds you of someone you love. It is said to tug at the strings of this body organ. Zing went the strings of my what? I think it's heart. Your heart. Zing went the strings of my heart. Absolutely right. Good. 15 points. You know, they tell you don't get too much salt in your diet because it can be dangerous. That's true. But for your muscles to contract and for your nerves to work, you do need the chemical element with the symbol capital A, small, capital N, small a, which is found in salt. Capital N, which is found in Sodium. Sodium is right. Yep. It's sodium chloride, N-A-C-L. Good. You got two of those. Let's go for all three in body systems. Now, you should know this. I've got a picture for you. Let's look at this picture. Unfortunately, during the pandemic, we've seen this picture so, so, so many times. COVID-19's novel coronavirus causes something called silent hypoxia, which means the amount of oxygen in your blood is so low that your organs can't survive. So in order to get that oxygen into you quickly, they put you on one of these V, as in victory, one of these V-initialed machines. Name it for 25 points. Um... I think it's ventilation. We will take that. Yes, ventilator or ventilation. Absolutely right. Give yourself 25 points. Was that Nalen who came up with that? 
Yes. All right. Way to go, young man. 120. That's a great start. Let's see some smiles out there. You're doing well. You're bringing a lot of pride and joy over there to Tulip Grove. See you in a couple minutes. All right, it is now time to meet that team from Yorktown Elementary School. Would you please say hello to Julius. Julius, wave to everybody out there watching Science Bowl today. Julius is a fifth grader, joined by Lana. Hey, Lana, another fifth grader. Wave to everyone, Lana. And uh, also in blue out there today, must be the school color, is Nate. Hey, Nate, he is a fourth grader. All right. Okay, Yorktown, it's time to play the science bowl. Let's go to the green things, questions all about plants. Here's your first one for five points. Henry Louis Gates' television show that reveals the ancestors of famous people. Sounds like it's a gardening show because its title is Finding Your What's. What do you guys think? Remember, it is a green things category. It's about plants. Henry Louis uh, Gates' TV show reveals the ancestors of famous people. It sounds like it could be a gardening show because its title is Finding Your What? Tree. Roots. Roots. Finding mm. your roots. You know, you're trying to find out where you came from. Your roots. That's what we're looking for there. Let's go to 15 points in green things. Water molecules, they like to hang together. And in really tight spaces, like inside of a straw or inside the xylem tubes of plants, they can actually go up a few centimeters, even though gravity is trying to pull them down. What kind of C-initialed action is responsible for that? Same thing that causes water to be sucked up into a sponge. What kind of C initial action? Your teacher might have demonstrated this by putting a stalk of celery into some water with some red food dye. And you see the red food dye go up the stalk of the celery. What's that called? Capillary action. Capillary action is what its name was there. All right, let's try the, the last question of that category for 25 points. I know you're going to get this one. Scientists have been able to genetically engineer a species of algae. Algae is that green plant that takes over your fish tank and you see all the time in ponds that are uh, sometimes a little polluted. Scientists have genetically engineered a species of algae that can split a water molecule into these two gases. What two chemicals make up water? If you know that, you got yourself 25 points. Um, okay, I would unmute say, yourselves, talk, so that Julius can hear, so we can get some ideas here. I would think it would be steam and something else. Steam. I, think it, I think it's hydrogen and oxygen. Yeah. You got it. You got it. It is hydrogen and oxygen. H2O. Now I'm seeing some smiles. That's what I want to see. Good going. All right. Now let's go to the zoo. Let's go to the zoo for five points. It's an interesting question. Scientists have finally discovered why these structures on fish, start imagining a fish, why these structures on fish are so strong and long lasting that they can bend without breaking, but they're still strong enough to push the fish through the water. I think it's... I would think fins or scales. Fins, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's the fins. Yeah, imagine that, those little fins, they move back and forth all the time. They, they have to be light enough to get through the water, but strong enough not to break. Good, you got yourself another five more points. Now you're cooking for 15 points in zoo. Some caterpillars have evolved to look like bird poop so that other things don't find them and eat them. Some of them even look like poisonous snakes to trick predators. Some caterpillars then, when they metamorphose into adult butterflies, keep up the deception. And on their wings are these body parts that also can scare away predators. <laughs> What body stopped. parts that would appear on the wings that look, they look like these body parts, 
on the wings that would scare away predators. Lashes. No, it looks like eyes. It looks, it looks like, like eyes. eyes. Exactly right. They look like eyes. Good. All right, let's show you a picture for Zoo Parade and 25 points. Let's get this one. If you like shrimp, we're going to tempt you here with some shrimp. You know, some of you like raw shrimp. Some of you like to have breaded shrimp. Sometimes shrimp in uh, different kinds of Chinese food. You know, if you're eating raw shrimp, the best thing to do is to do what you see here. You have to remove the dark vein that goes along the back all the way down to the tail. That vein is actually part of the shrimp's digestive system and not this body system. Respiratory? Yeah, respiratory. Not respiratory. Correct answer there was circulatory. Circulatory has veins and arteries. So we can't give you the points there. Let's go to the body systems. All right. If you like bananas, you may know the answer here. Since your body needs electrolytes to function well, that's why people drink Gatorade and, and things like that. One of the most crucial minerals in your diet should be the one that is often associated with bananas. On the periodic table of elements, it is symbolized with the letter K. Potassium. Name that. It is potassium. You knew that one. Perfect. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Come on, pat yourselves on the back. That's it. You know what you know, and you're showing us. 15 points in body systems. Boy, you know, sometimes you have heard the phrase when the, you look at the ocean, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Why? You cannot quench, quench your thirst by drinking salt water because the high salt content will overwhelm this filtering organ in your body and lead to a quick death. Kidney. Name the body organs that filter, that would filter out the salt. What did you say, Lana? It would be kidneys. Yeah, I, I'm going with kidneys. Me too. I, I was thinking that. Kidneys. Got it. Kidneys is absolutely right for 15 points. All right, 25 pointer. Let's get this one. You're really racking up the points. For 25 points in body systems, this year's Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to two Americans who discovered that the spiciness of peppers and the heat associated with peppers. You know, if you eat a hot pepper, oh my gosh, it hurts and it's hot. The spiciness and the heat of peppers are sensed by the same ones of these R initialed structures in your mouth and on your skin. R initialed. Um, Spice, the spiciness and the heat are called stimuluses or stimuli, and they are sensed by what R initialed structures. Um. Uh -oh. That's a tough one. They're called receptors, receptors. It's like a quarterback needs a receiver. Well, a stimulus needs a receptor in order to make, uh, for you to sense heat or pain. You did really well, 115. Should be proud of that. You started out from scratch. I like those smiles. We'll bring you back in a couple minutes. Nice going there, Yorktown. All right, it's now time to talk to that team from Tulip Grove and find out a little bit more about our players. Let's go first and talk to the captain, Mackenzie. Mackenzie, tell us about yourself. You're a fifth grader. Why do you want to do this? Uh, my favorite subject is science, and I'm just really um, like interested and uh, fascinated in like, everything like related to science. Yeah, there's so much science going on today, and you know, it's, uh, you almost can't keep up with it. And that's why this show is good, and that's why a good grounding in science is good, because then the things that happen don't scare you, and you can kind of figure out what's going on. What do you want to do someday? Have you thought about that? You're only in the fifth grade, though. Um, I want to do something with, like, animals, like maybe, like, work at an animal shelter, because I really like dogs. Yeah, very nice. Do you have a dog yourself? Yeah, his name is Sam. Uh, what kind of dog is he? He's a beagle. Wow, beagles are wonderful dogs. Yeah, very loyal. 
Um, he's lucky to have you. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go and talk to Peyton. Peyton, now you were on the show before. It's nice to have you back again. So you came back, so you must like this. And it looks like you have a Science Bowl t-shirt on there. I see that little footprint there. Is that, is that sign? Oh, look at that. That's wonderful. Thanks, thanks for wearing that today. Uh, what did you like about Science Bowl that made you come back? Well, I loved the f fact that we get to spend time studying together. And when it came to the competitions, it was really fun to do. It helps challenge my brain. Wow, and we all need to have our brains challenged no matter how young or how old we are. We always can learn new things. What do you want to do someday? Um, when I'm older, I would like to be a veterinarian because um, I love helping animals and um, I really like, like the fact that medicine can help them. Oh, absolutely right. And we love our pets. And there's a, there's a show that's on television just starting called All Creatures Great and Small. It's about a veterinarian in Scotland who takes care of farm animals. And that's something you would enjoy. Let's talk to your other teammate, Naylan. Hey, Naylan. Hey. You came up with that great answer there at the end of the last round. You knew about the ventilators. So you've been watching TV and you've been following what's happening in this pandemic here. How do you know so much about science? Well, I study a lot. And I read shows about science. Oh, boy, it shows. And how about yourself? Have you thought about your future, what you might eventually want to do when you get older? I kind of want to be a scientist. Yeah. And there are so many different kinds of scientists. So I wish you luck. And this is a good first step that you've made on that long journey. And uh, someday I want to read about you when you get your Nobel Prize someday for being an outstanding scientist. Nice to have you here today, young man. All right, Tulip Grove, it's now time for your last nine questions. Are we ready? Are we ready and raring to go? Let's do it, here we go, give us your all. Let's go to Let's Get Physical for five points. Since the chemicals chlorine, bromine, and iodine all have similar properties, not unlike brothers and sisters, they're grouped together on the periodic table of elements as members of the same what? Family. Family is absolutely right. Good. You followed that clue perfectly. Got yourselves five points. Let's go to the 15-point question. If you watch the Muppets, and I love the Muppets, there's a character called Lou Zealand. L-E-W, and then like New Zealand, Z-E-A-L-A-N-D. Lou Zealand is best known for throwing fish that come back to him just like what familiar Australian sticks? Boomerang. Yeah. <laughs> he throws the fish. Bam, it comes back and hits him in the face. It's a fish boomerang. Good answer. 25 points, the big one in Let's Get Physical. You're doing great. You know, if you've ever seen a rocket launch, it's just amazing that that rocket can rise up. Even though gravity is pulling it down, somehow it can break free of gravity to get into outer space. 25,000 miles per hour is the amount of power needed by a rocket to get into outer space. This is known as the rocket's escape what? Acceleration? Yeah, I... Streamline? Uh, I think... I, um, I, yeah, I think acceleration. That, that's a very good guess, and it's, it's one that is... is reasonable. It's called the escape velocity. The escape velocity. That's what you're looking for there. Good try. Let's go to potpourri for five points. Multiple choice. We're just talking about boomerangs. Let's go back to Australia. If you were studying the fauna, F-A-U-N-A, -A, the fauna of Australia, would you be studying kangaroos, eucalyptus trees, or rock formations? The fauna of Australia. Kangaroos, trees, rock formations. I think it's kangaroos. I think it's rock. I yeah. think kangaroos. Kangaroos, I hear, I hear yeah. kangaroos, I hear rocks. What are we going to go with? Mackenzie. Kangaroos. It is kangaroos, absolutely right. It's like the fauna and flora. Fauna is always the animal. The flora are the plants of a particular place. 
Good answer. All right, let's do, uh, let's do 15 points in science potpourri. Since the fumes of a chemical known as ether, if you breathe it in deeply, causes unconsciousness, it was long used by these kinds of doctors to put people to sleep during surgery. Is it like anesthesia? Oh, yeah. It is anesthesia, yes. And those are anesthesiologists. Nicely done, Mackenzie. All right, for 25 points, I have a picture for you. Let's have a look. You won't believe what this is. Over in Hawaii, there is a volcano called Kilauea, which is very active. And when it erupts and spews out lava, it also spews out this stuff that they call Pele's hair. Pele is a goddess of the volcanoes, and they say this is her hair. What you are actually looking at is the volcanic version of this material that is actually made of sand and is easily shattered. Um, unmute yourselves, unmute glass. yourselves. Unmute yourself, unmute yourself. It is glass, absolutely right. Pele's hair is spun glass, beautifully done. Let's go to Dateline for five points. Just three more questions. Keep up your good work. To better see the turbulence inside of a hurricane, some scientists, some very brave scientists, have de designed a surface fleet of these flying devices that have the same name as male bees. Is it like a drone? Uh, I think it is a drone, absolutely right. Male bees are drones, and they have a whole fleet of these drones that actually can fly into a hurricane to find out, you know, what is going on in there without endangering themselves. Dateline for 15 points. John Nash, the subject of the movie A Beautiful Mind. In real life, John Nash won a Nobel Prize for his breakthroughs in cryptography. It is a subject that is aligned with the M in STEM. Name that subject. What do you guys think? The M in STEM. Oh, I'm, I didn't think you would have any trouble with this one. Because all of us now, instead of just taking science, we take STEM. We have STEM fairs. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. M is mathematics. All right, last question of the game. Many scientists thought the Nobel Prize in Medicine this year should have gone, it didn't, should have gone to the vaccine developers who used what messenger chemical for the very first time to make the vaccines that have saved hundreds of thousands of lives? Messenger what? What was the name of that chemical that they used for the very first time? Peyton wants to say something. Un unmute yourselves. Um, I, I, so. um, hormones? Not hormones. I'm sure you've all heard of DNA. This was RNA, messenger RNA. So instead of using growing vaccines inside eggs like they do to get the vaccines for the flu, they used our body's own genetic material. 190 points. That's a great score. Let's see if it holds up. Let's see if it'll win the game for you, Tulip Grove. We'll see you back in just a couple minutes. All right, it's now time to meet that team from Yorktown Elementary School. Let's talk to their captain first, and that is Julius. Julius, tell us all about why you wanted to do this today. Um, I like to do this because I like science, and I like how the experiments work, and I think it's kind of cool. 
Yeah, it is cool. Yeah, and that's why science is such a favorite subject because you got to you get to handle things. You got to you have lab equipment and you do experiments and you're learning by doing it. It's it's just a great subject. But then of course I'm a little prejudiced on that <laughs> because I was a science teacher for many years. What would you like to do someday? Would you like to be a scientist? No, I would like to be either an NFL player or a sports broadcaster. Really? Wow. What's your favorite NFL team? The Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, yeah, nicely done. And Seattle, uh, I think their NHL team is the Kraken up there. I, I like that as a, as a mascot. All right, well, good luck in your uh, athletic aspirations there. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go and see what uh, Lana is all about. Hey, Lana, you're a fifth grader, just like Julius, and here you are. Why would you want to be on the Science Bowl? I want to be on the Science Bowl because I think it's very interesting and I love to experiment. I also love to uh, work with um, people when I do experiments and it's just always been a favorite of mine for many years. Well, I'm so glad and I hope that interest continues. I hope you get to be a scientist and you made a good point. You know, it's not all about theories and laboratory experiments, it's about people. You know, and you've got to learn to work with people, and it's collaborative now. You know, the, the day when one person makes a discovery, that's long past. It now usually takes a team. Good luck to you. And let's talk to Nate. Hey, Nate. Nice to have you here today. <laughs> Nate, I, did I hear correctly that your mom is actually helping to coach the team? Yes. Well, that's great. So you got two members of the Kelm family with us today. And uh, did she give you any pointers? Uh, always listen carefully to your questions because you give us hints. See, Mom knows what she's talking about. <laughs> You're doing just a fabulous job. I know she's very proud of you. Tell me uh, what you're thinking about it for a career, if you have as yet. Um, I want to join the Marine Corps. Wonderful, wonderful. Is that something in your family tradition or some, uh, some of your relatives, have they been or are they in the Marines? Uh, yes, actually, my, being in the military kind of runs in my family. That's wonderful. Well, you're going to uphold that tradition, and I, I applaud you for that. That's a, a great ambition. All right, Nate. All right, Yorktown, you're currently at 115 points. Let's see if you can add to that tally. All right, all right. Give it your all. You know, it's like this is the, the, la the, the two-minute warning. you got to come through. you got to make this catch. Julius, she's, she, Julius is up there. It's going to make sure that all this works out just fine. Here we go. Let's get physical for five points. Among the many discoveries of Albert Einstein was that nothing, nothing in the universe travels faster than this. The speed of light, I would think. Light, yeah, probably The light. speed of light, absolutely right. That's the universal speed limit. That's the way to do it. 15 points, and let's get physical. You know... All that ocean water that you cannot drink. But if you're smart, you know that if you boil salt water, that water turns to steam. And if you put a lid on top of that boiling pot of salt water, you will get fresh water that you can drink. What is the process that forms that water on the underside of the lid? Um, what do you guys think? I would think, I'm not sure why, but I would think evaporation because the water is so hot. Julius um, and uh, Lana, I hear evaporation from Nate. Uh, do, you have, do you have any ideas? Uh, me too. I think it's evaporation. Okay. Well, evaporation is what happens when the water turns to steam. But when it hits and reforms as water, that's called condensation. Condensation, like the dew that forms in the morning. All right, let's get this next one. 25 points. Nutritionists tell you, be careful, don't eat too much swordfish or tuna, because they both contain high levels of this dangerous chemical element that has the symbol HG. 
What do you guys think? Sometimes it even tells you that on the side of the can. Uh, um, Unfortunately, HG gives you no clue to the spelling of the, because it is is derived from a a different word. It's mercury, mercury. Mercury can be dangerous in food. All right, let's go to potpourri for five points. Those of you that have pets will know this. The singer-actress Madonna like many dogs, suffer from brontophobia, which is a fear of this weather phenomenon, the same reason that they called the dinosaur a brontosaurus, because when it walked, it sounded like what? Thunder. Thunder, that's right, the thunder lizard. How many dogs run and hide under the bed when the thunder and the lightning start? Good, good work there, Julius. All right, let's go to the 15-point question in potpourri. This device, based on amplified light, can do a number of things. It can scan barcodes when you go to the supermarket. It can be a substitute for a scalpel in surgery. And it also can be used as a pointer if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation. Name that device. I would do think all laser, laser pointer. Yeah. Laser Absolutely. Pointer. Absolutely. It is a laser pointer. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Julius. Uh, Lana, I'm not hearing you offer too many uh, suggestions there. Make sure you come in here. Make sure you're part of the team. 25 points, potpourri. Because the Earth wobbles on its axis, the position of the North Star relative to the Earth actually changes every 26,000 years. That's amazing. There are two stars, Vega and Deneb, that could replace this current North Star. Its name, the current North Star, has a P-initialed name, the same name as a famous nuclear submarine. Um, What do you guys think? I remember hearing about something like this. Polaris? Maybe. Yes. Who said that? Julia said it is. It is Polaris. Absolutely right. For 25 points, you pulled that one out of the hat. Why? Nicely done. All right, I got three more questions for you. All right, this is the home stretch. Stay with me here for five points in Dateline. The South Pole, which is really, really cold. Last year had its coldest winter ever. Average temperature, minus 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So our cold temperatures are not even close to that. The cause was something called the polar vortex that started in this second S initialed layer of the atmosphere. The first layer is the troposphere where we're living. What is the S initialed layer right above that where you can find these polar vortexes? I think it's stratosphere. It is the stratosphere, perfectly. Stratosphere is correct. Good, for five points. Let's get 15 points. This is the creepiest thing. After a heavy rain in Arizona recently, some really odd crustaceans called dinosaur shrimp appeared in a pond. They were awful looking things. They called them triops, T-R-I-O-P-S, because each shrimp had how many of what bodily feature? I would think three. Three. three It's three legs, three arms, or three eyes. What do you guys think? Nate has presented you with some multiple choices there. You can choose among those. He says legs, eyes, or what was the other one? Arms. Arms. Because try means three. Yeah. Triops. P R I O P S. Julius, I'm going to leave the decision up to you. I think it's eyes. You think it? Say it again. Eyes. Eyes is correct. Yes, because op, like an optic nerve. Absolutely right. You got. And Nate, that's the way to parse a word. 
Prefixes, suffixes, you did that perfectly. All of you did that. Last question of the game is a visual. Let's have a look. Dr. Francis Collins, the director of the Institutes of Health, who came up with a human genome project. He was the one who decoded all of the genes. He's an amazing man. He also plays a mean guitar. And on his guitar in his band is this famous symbol of the DNA molecule. Name that structure. Guys. That's what I think. I think, that's I think, I think the think. double helix. Yeah, double helix. It is the double helix. Absolutely <laughs> right. Yes, indeed. 210 points. That sounds good to me. Let's see if that wins it for you. We'll be back in just a moment. I love your spouse. I love your reaction. You know, earlier today we had a game. The score was 220 to 225. So, so close. This game, similarly so. Our final tally today is Tulip Grove 190, Yorktown 210. Congratulations, Yorktown. One step closer to a second county championship 24 years later. A nice round of applause for Yorktown and a wonderful round of applause for Tulip Grove. Always tremendous competitors, great students, all of you. You know, when you think about it, when we adults think about you, fourth and fifth graders here, and the amount that you know at this point in your life, it puts us to shame. Because when we were your age, we didn't have the same kind of opportunities, and I don't know that we were as, as savvy about things as you guys are. Because obviously, you're curious about life. You read, you watch television, you talk to each other, and you're absorbing all of that, and you make us all proud. And we are proud of you. Today, the school system is proud of you for what you've done. And uh, I just hope that a lot of you come back and play this game again. We're gonna see Yorktown this afternoon playing Hyattsville. But even in subsequent years, as I like to say, you can play science ball from the third grade until the eighth grade. And we've had students do that. And they go on oftentimes, and they become scientists in their own right would like to think that this was help this is a launching pad in some ways for that we also hope that we will you think back on this that you think it was a fun experiment and a fun experience for you because we certainly enjoyed having you why don't we wave to everyone at home wave to everyone at home please